From Hollywood, it's time now for... Jenny Dollar. You're there. Sure, I'm here. What? I, I mean, at your hotel. Is this Susan? That's right. Why aren't you out there, Mr. Dollar? Out where? On the old boulder cutoff. If I'm supposed to meet you there in 15 minutes, you're going to have to... Wait a minute, to... wait a minute. What the devil is this all about? Where'd you get any idea I was supposed to meet you? From your friend. What? Sure, he phoned here a few minutes ago. He said I should slip away from the ranch, take the station wagon, and meet you over on the old road right away. I just phoned your hotel on the off chance Wait, that... I don't imagine he gave his name. No, and, and I didn't recognize the voice. Susan, listen. Get away from there right away. Don't go near that road. Come straight here to my hotel, do you understand? Yes, but... but why? What's it all about? Never mind. Just get here and get here fast. While you're still alive. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Las Vegas, Nevada... To the home office, Amicon Northern Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the matter of reasonable doubt. It was only 9.30 p.m., less than two hours since I'd thrown my rock into the pool to stir up the fish. I'd expected results, sure, but not this fast and not this deadly. I'd picked a gambling casino owner named Deuce McCoy as my broadcaster... And I'd let him know who I was, why I was here, and what I was going to do. Apparently, the news had gone out fast. But I couldn't figure this move. Even with young Susan out of the way, they still couldn't get their hands on her grandmother's estate. It didn't make sense. At least, not right then. One thing, though, that I was sure of. If Susan Gramley had driven out that deserted road alone, she'd have never come back. Not alive. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Dollar. All right, just a second. Well, come on in, Susan. Thanks. I guess it's really it's I, though. I, I mean to be correct. I don't care whether it's I or me, just as long as it's you. Say that again? Oh, skip it. You have any trouble? I missed the green light at Fremont and Fifth. Anybody follow you from the ranch? Nope. Who was there when you left? All of them. Uncle Walter and Hilda had just come in. Together. Can you beat it? Well, then it wouldn't have been Walter who phoned you. Oh, not him. He's got a kind of a sneaky undertone. I'd have recognized him right away. And you didn't recognize the voice on the phone? No. He, he didn't say much, just that he was a friend of yours, and you wanted me to reach, meet you right away, so I said okay, and he hung up. I see. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. Oh, what did you mean when you said, get here while you're still alive? I wish I knew. Look, Susan, that phone call wasn't just a practical joke. Then you do know. I know somebody was trying to get you out on that desert alone tonight. And they weren't trying it just for laughs. You mean that... I mean the luckiest thing you ever did was to pick up that phone and call this hotel. But why, Mr. Dollar? Why would anybody want... That's what I don't know. I don't see what they'd hope to gain by it. They know the trust hasn't been set up yet. Your grandmother's still in control of the property, not you. Look, I excuse my ignorance, but I, I don't think I know what you're talking about. <sighs> Well, maybe it's time you did, since you seem to be right in the middle of it now. Look, your grandmother decided to set up an insurance trust and convey all her holdings over to you. To me? Gran was going to do that. Jonas Parks at the Flint Rock Bank started proceedings, then got cold feet. He got the idea there was something screwy behind the whole thing. So he wired Hartford, and the trust company sent me out here to investigate. But Gran never said a word. She didn't even mention it. She was scared to death. Afraid Walter and Hilda would find out and block her off, have her declared incompetent, get control of the estate and leave you clear out in the cold. She thinks a lot of you, Susan. Grand's the most, isn't she? How did she seem when you left? Back on her feet? Oh, better than she's been in months. More relaxed. I guess she's counting on you, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, well, I wish I could be sure she couldn't. Look, that phone call I got, if Uncle Walter and Hilda weren't behind it, then... Then who was? Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty certain that by now they know who I am and why I'm here. And they know I'm out to get them. 
I dropped the word a couple of hours ago. I figured they'd react all right, but I didn't expect this move against you. But there has to be somebody else in on it, Mr. Dollar. Neither of them made the phone call. Yeah, I know. But nobody else even knew about the trust. Jonas Parks did, and Will Connors of the Weekly Tribune. But they've been friends of Grant's for years and years. They wouldn't do anything to harm her. I didn't say they would. And they couldn't have had anything to do with the accident that killed my parents. Nobody could have, except Hilda and Uncle Walter. Unless, of course, it was just an accident. Oh, you know better than that, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder if I actually know very much about any of this. Susan, listen, how scared are you? Oh, I'm not scared at all. I'm, I'm just bewildered, I guess. Good, then you won't be afraid to stay here alone for a while. Of course not. Sounds kind of grown up, in fact. Yeah, well, all right then. Don't leave the room. Keep the door locked and don't let anybody in. If someone should try, call the manager and have him call the police. Don't answer the phone unless it rings twice. That'll be me. Got it? Got it. Good. Hey, there are a couple of magazines there on the nightstand. Can I ask you what you're going to do, Mr. Dollar? Sure, you can ask. See you later, Susan. Stinker. young fella. I kind of hoping you'd drop around. Wasn't sure I'd find you here, Mr. Connors, this time of night. Oh, the paper comes out tomorrow, Mr. Dollar. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I always stay around late the night before press day, just in case a big story breaks. Sure. Uh, Got to be here, you know, to break down the front page and remake the galley and all. Uh, them's technical terms, of course. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you might have a story for me, but now, maybe that scoop we was talking about? Nope, not yet. Well, I can hold the press until 9.30 a.m. in the morning, but that's the last doggone final zero hour. And a minute later, come calamity, cataclysm, or high water, the Tribune has got to roll. Yeah, sure. Well, maybe you'll have your scoop before 9.30, Mr. Connors. You mean you're working on a clue? Check. Hot dog. Yep, you said it. You uh, getting close to the denouement? To the what? Denouement. Yeah, that's a technical word. That's when the detective always pounces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm not about to pounce at the moment, Mr. Connery. Yeah, well, look, keep your voice down, son. Why? There's nobody else here. You never know on this kind of a case. Well, let's take a chance. All right. I'm game if you are. Good. I've got a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Shoot, son. You know anything about a gambler named Deuce McCoy... Owns the Lead Balloon Casino over across town? Well, I know who he is, all right. He don't own it, though. He just runs it for a syndicate. Works on a salary, you mean? Mm, salary and percentage, I reckon. He ain't getting rich on it, though. Not the way he lets it get away from him. On what? Just two words, son. Women. Hilda Gramley wouldn't be one of them, would she? Well, it's a new one on me if she is. Of course, you live and learn. <laughs> you sure do. Yeah, and be right cozy if something like that was going on. Her husband spends half his time in McCoy's place. Yeah, I know. You uh, figure Deuce McCoy's tied in on this Gramley thing? I don't know. You want to do me a favor, Mr. Connors? Well, just sing it out, young fella, with this scoop. Well, listen, young Susan Gramley is in my room over at the hotel. You don't say so. Well, but Never you... mind, it's a long story. I hate to have her there alone. So how about going over and babysitting for a while? Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. All right, I'll phone her first so she won't lay you out with an ashtray... And I'll keep in touch with you. If there's a story, you'll get it. Meanwhile, clam up. Right. I'll see you later. Yeah, uh, do you uh, pack a gun, Mr. Dollar? Sometimes. Why? Deuce McCoy does, too. All the time. The evening was just starting in the lead balloon, with two crab tables already in action, two more standing by, and a roulette wheel warming up. No one paid any attention when I walked back through the casino to the office. I waited what I considered a reasonable length of time, then tried the knob. The door was unlocked. Go on, Buster. Beat it. The girl was alone in the office, sprawled back on the sofa, drink in her hand. And it was pretty obvious it wasn't her first one, nor her second or third. She'd have been a real knockout, sober. What's the matter? Don't you understand English? I said get out. Where's McCoy? What's it to you? <laughs> Feeling no pain, huh? Well, cut it, Buster. Must have been a pretty big pain, though, earlier, if it's taken this much to kill it. Go on and get out of here. Well, you think you ought to talk like that? Johnny Dollar, who are you? 
Get away from that desk. If Deuce finds you messing around in here, he'll kill you. Even if I told him I was a close friend of yours? You rat. I'll call one of the boys and get you thrown out of here. Oh, I wouldn't. Might make an awful scandal. And I don't think Deuce would want that. Not right at present. What are you talking about? Oh, come now. You're in it too, aren't you? You're... No, you're not with the police. I know them all. You're FBI. Oh, what makes you say that? Look, if Deuce is in a jam, I don't know anything about it. What's your name? Nikki. Nikki Vernon. All right, Nikki, sit down and relax. Whoops! Now, where's Deuce McCoy? Think if I knew I'd be sitting here by myself, lushing it up? I suppose you were McCoy's girl before Hilda Gramley cut you out. Cut me out? Nothing. That rotten little sneak's been asking for it, and I'm about ready to give it to her, too. Is she here this evening? You see any blood on the rug? Just let me catch that dirty little... Shut up, Nikki, and sit down, will you? Now, what about Walter Gramley? Was he here? Yeah, earlier. He was here in the office for about an hour. I don't know what they talked about. Deuce made me get out. And Deuce left right afterwards? Half an hour or so. He had to wait to make a phone call first. I see. Well, if you're smart, you'll forget him, Nikki. I've got a hunch he's not coming back. It's her. He's going to go off with that dirty... Knock it. He's going off because he's in a jam. That's one thing you were right about. And by now, he must know the whole thing is falling apart. I think he'll try to run for it. How to kill that dame. Why? Why don't you throw away that bottle and forget about him? He's no good, Nikki. You know that, don't you? Sure, I know it. Then why are you beating your heart out over him? <laughs> You've never been a woman. Have you, Mr. Dollar? Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, I tag the pitch too late, and a runner gets home. The score? One to nothing. In favor of death. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.